Oh, crap. Everyone goes quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the 21st episode organ donor of the Number One Crude Mistakes podcast with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and myself, Hovar, from Behind the Mistakes. Welcome, guys. New week. Hi. Yay. Hi. Hello. I just coined the the title for the next episode there. I um, just had yeah. to make sure it was the 21st. <laughs> <laughs> And if not, it is now. <laughs> yeah, by my my by my math, it's all sort of twenty first. Well, I think we've just got a new title. We can call it twenty one again, then, can't we? <laughs> Forever twenty one. Yeah, <laughs> and I just <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. I wish. <laughs> I wish not. Well, well, physically, yes. Mentally, hell no. <laughs> uh, I was not a complete grown up at twenty one. Definitely not. I think I was more grown up at 21. (laughs) (laughs) I think I've been going downhill ever since. (laughs) Oh, that's bad. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen that's been a a trend this week where people are uh, posting their um, picture from when they were 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that too. It's uh, not something I joined in on. I don't think I've got any photographic evidence of me at 21, to be honest with you. (laughs) <laughs> now um i realized i'm one of the lucky few that uh well all the pictures that exist are in a hardcover album somewhere and uh <laughs> the people with the technical skill and or a scanner are few and far between so the evidence <laughs> stays hidden <laughs> i don't when... i don't want this to sound rude Havard, but did you still have hair at 21 no no <laughs> It's it's basically been the same. It's been more fuller at the top, if you ever could have used the word full, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Just been that way since you were born? No, that it hasn't, but uh, the, the hairline has always been kind of high. But yeah, I had actually long hair at some point, and of course I had a goth face, so I um, <laughs> colored it black. Uh, and there are some pictures, but yeah, they will never see the light of day. <laughs> you, wore, you wore black makeup. Uh, I didn't go that far. I came from a, a small rural place, so that would be social suicide. <laughs> Brilliant. I think at 21, I bought my first digital camera, but then I mostly took pictures of other people. So, but yeah, there's probably some out there. Of me, yeah. I think it was about the first time I bought my first mobile phone. Yeah, you couldn't after... take photos with your first mobile phone. No, no, no. no, no. no. Okay. No. <laughs> no text messages and uh, ringing people, and that was it. I think there might have been a basic game on there, Snake or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the high tech. Yeah, high tech stuff back and in the you, days. And if you wanted a good ringtone, you had to literally physically type it in. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was actually really fun. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to get as close as possible to the cantina music from Star Wars or Inspector Gadget <laughs> or something like that. That was my jam. I mean, not just when I was 21. Have you ever got hold of your friend's mobile phone and just changed the language on it? <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Yeah, that was, I don't think I ever did it, but I got it done to me, I remember. <laughs> The nice thing was that everybody had the same phones, basically. So you you could just find someone with an identical phone and you could just double step all the menu choices and then you could swap back again. (laughs) Of course, I was the only one uh, going the... Was it the... I don't even remember the name. But you went the Blackberry route, didn't you? No, no, I never did. Um, No. I had a Philips once. No, I actually had two Philips, uh, but there was another brand I don't remember, which was it was one of the first one with a color screen and it could play MP3 music and so on. But of course, nobody else had that brand. So when someone changed the language on it, <laughs> I was really stuck and you, you couldn't Google anything because that wasn't <laughs> a thing. So, um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think the first phone I got that could do that was a Sony Ericsson, and um, I left that in the back of a taxi. <laughs> <in the evening. laughs> yeah, I really like the the physical keyboard or the full QWERTY keyboard. I never had a BlackBerry, but I had some other ones close to it. So it was sad the day I finally realized, no, this is not <laughs> something of the future. I have to step up to the <laughs> to the screen only. A sad day. Yeah. Well, I still have one of my Nokia phones deep down in a drawer somewhere um, because it was all steel chassis and it's really good and the size is perfect and uh, of course the the keys are also well balanced and everything so sometimes I just stumble over it looking for something else and I just pick it up and (laughs) oh those were the days and I can still probably write (laughs) faster on that one while driving a car blindfolded uh, than I can (laughs) with my uh, phone today (laughs) My brother got a phone very, very early on, and um, it was one of the stupid ones. So it was mainly battery, and then the handset actually lifted off it. It was corded to the actual battery. Ah, yeah, the real old school. Yeah, one. I mean, it was. It must have weighed about six, seven kilos. That thing. It was ridiculous, and it was an absolute fortune to ring. Yeah. <laughs> Things have progressed. <laughs> Well, that was one of the things that um, a friend of mine actually worked for the company who made the mobile phones that I had. And this never made it into the stores, but they actually had batteries for my phone that lasted for like a fortnight. And of course, as he worked there, he got me one of them. And it's like, I had that phone when I went into the army. And I I remember I... uh, I was working the kitchen there, so we were working shifts. So, of course, I had a week on and a week off. And I actually remember coming there and not charging my phone before I left and went back home again. It's like uh, you could use it uh, heavily for a week and it didn't even put a dent in the battery. It was amazing. (laughs) And I'm lucky if my phone lasts a day. Yeah, nowadays it's... yeah. And you anybody need would... like a battery pack for like a power tool or something. To... <laughs> yeah, keep that going. Yeah, the tool companies probably should make phones compatible with their batteries, shouldn't they? Make their own phones. <laughs> you'd, re- you'd really see some brand loyalty then, wouldn't you? Oh yes, that would yeah, be a huge like phone. Like a, a battery cover that actually slits slots onto the Makita or Bosch or yeah. whatever. <laughs> so it's the big. Oh, <laughs> I actually have this That's a uh, neat idea actually <laughs> I have this charger unit for my Bosch batteries uh, where you can put a USB cable in to charge whatever Yeah, and of course I just throw the battery in my backpack and bring a cable and of course uh, I got some questions because I did not think far enough and then I was going to flu- I'm going to fly home to visit my mom and then you come to the airport with like a industrial grade battery in it and a lot of cables and well it's my uh, phone charger and of course they're used to these small skinny like battery packs but when you show up with like the industrial grade battery uh, really chuffed up and covered in concrete and whatnot so <laughs> but i mean that that will charge my phone probably 10 15 times or whatever so it's, it's it really works yeah, yeah that's good going <laughs> So, except for phones, how's your weeks been? Anything out of the ordinary? Go on, KJ, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, making-wise, it's uh, almost uh, exclusively been the knife, uh, working on, on that. Um, still not done, still working on it. Uh, and I I've, I mean, it's it's the, the classic thing of when you're having one project and you you're you're a bit scared of of going forward with it because you're afraid to mess it up. At least <laughs> I am. Uh, so then you start thinking about what you're going to do next. It's oh, I could do this, and then I digging out materials. So, no, no, yes, you've dug out the material. It can lay there, but now you have to focus <laughs> on this project because this one has to be done first. What I want to no, focus on this one. So that's been been mostly it, uh, for me. 
So what's you know, the I... status now then? Because you skipped a part as well. You forgot something, didn't you? So now you're closer to completion then. Or did you double <laughs> back to have a go at the electronics? Uh, I'm not sure what you're... You, you've uh, hinted, maybe I, maybe I dreamt no, you, it. No, you know. hinted on um, Instagram that you'd forgotten to put your electronics ah, in. Ah, yeah, no, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that was just uh, some uh, some classic uh, fake drama uh, <laughs> of uh, uh, because I actually made the handle uh, semi-removable, uh, so you can actually uh, pick off uh, one of the wooden parts uh, to get access to the interior if need be. Nice. Does it hold a battery in there then, in the handle, though? Because uh, it was it, going to be corded, wasn't it? Yeah, it's still going to be corded. Okay. Uh, um, because that seems like more fun, and I still <laughs> haven't gotten the, all the parts I would need to make a battery-powered one. Because uh, ordering stuff from the UK makes customs hate you, and uh, it takes a lot of time. Um and uh, the way I've done it now, I don't think I can fit the battery pack in at the moment. So then I had to modify it some more. Um, but yeah, I'm going for the corded one because I got it got it to work because I realized uh, I was uh, I was stupid and I had put one of the LEDs the wrong way around. That was why it didn't work <laughs> because I uh, as, the, the classic. Classic me. I assumed I understood how everything worked, but I had missed one tiny little detail which made everything flip on its head. <laughs> that happens all too often for me. I mean, I'm pretty good at just glancing at a problem and seeing and understanding it to like 95%. But sometimes that 5% I missed could be really, really important. Uh, so then nothing works. It can be problematic if you think you're right, can't it? To then double back. Yes. <laughs> and then when you you re, you realize that you're not right, and as you say, you have to double back and just check every step. Where did I? Where did I break off? <laughs> now that's a that's a well known problem, and I'm I'm not looking forward to it because I know it's going to happen. Um, I ordered a lot of parts this week. Um, of course, um, I ordered a computer for the health order and of course i need because i'm going from a like a monophonic to a polyphonic capability and of course that is all done in software today so of course i need a computer to run that and then i need a screen uh, and of course i need a audio interface because that you can't just connect a guitar to a computer so i also needed a audio interface to do that and I found them at a decent price. And then, of course, I found a, a LCD screen with touchscreen capabilities. So now it's going to have a touchscreen on the front. But then I also have to figure out how do you make an animation? Because when you're booting it up, of course, I want the Hellcorder logo uh, spinning around <laughs> like uh, old-fashioned DOS style or something like that. And, and I know it's going to be a lot of cursing to get the software to work i will probably have to reprogram the media widget cards over and over again to get them to work i mean i really struggled with the other one to test it i actually had to sell my MIDI keyboard and get another one because i could not get that to talk to the boards so yeah <laughs> it's uh i'm lining them up and then we'll see if i could you knock, not knock them out of the <laughs> park or if i just stumble into my own early demise could you not just buy an old, um, a cheap Amazon Fire tablet to do all of that for you yes so not, not basically but the no. software is the the software I have now from the manufacturer uh, got a reply that it will work only works on a Windows computer or a Mac and uh, ah, okay. hell is not going to put a Mac in it so <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, I realized, shit, when I get the computer, do I actually have to buy a standalone license for Windows 11? But it actually comes bundled with Windows. So I actually saved on that because uh, the license for Windows is probably going to cost the same as the computer I'm getting. So Fantastic. So what's the uh, what's the bill up to yet for the Hellcoder 2? Um, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, but that being said, with the exception for the plywood, which I can 
easily ballpark. I have all the other parts with prices and everything, so it's very easy to just export that and add them up. So uh, it's not going to be that expensive, but yeah, it's a, a couple of thousand euros or something, all in all, <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Will this make it work as a media player more easily? Yeah, uh, you, you can play MIDI files. And of course, I'm going to integrate a, a guitar amplifier in it as well and with a computer. So you can basically pull up Winamp to use a period typical software and then have it play music. <laughs> so yeah. It's gonna be I'm a, looking a... forward to hearing the podcast through it. <laughs> oh yeah we're gonna do a live episode yeah. so when we're looking at completion then when we're gonna see the hell quarter two video well it's painted um i've started designing the front grills but of course the main one i have to wait because i need the exact dimensions for that screen that i will integrate and then it's basically hooking up the electronics so it's not many weeks of like uh, an hour here and an hour there so i'm thinking uh it's gonna be uh, completed this summer cool. maybe i could bring it outside and then have a maypole on top of it and uh, dance <laughs> naked around it while i uh greet the summer or something like that you're not gonna put that out as a video are you patron oh, gonna, exclusive, it's gonna, patron yeah. exclusive yeah. <laughs> So what have you been up to, Glenn? I've also finished, well, not also because you haven't finished your knife. I've finished my knife. That all came together very quickly in the end and then mm-hmm. uh, had some fun posting about it and got some reels out and whatnot. So, yeah, it's been good. <laughs> some internal rivalry there. Yes. Yeah, she uh, she came out. She's uh, All the makes is finally admitting that she's married to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh... Not much of a competition now there, was it? She she really ditched you there. She she won by a mile. <laughs> it's funny we did not expect that wooden knife to cut a tomato. <laughs> it, just, yeah? it just went straight through it. I mean, there's no sharpness to it whatsoever. <laughs> I was uh, chatting to <laughs> chatting to Andy from uh, Cormorant uh, Craft Moira yesterday. And he was telling me about his knife. And I said, you know, don't forget to all the makes butter challenge. He said, that's fine. I can do the butter challenge. But she's going to have to do my cutting a chicken in half challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but we decided that wasn't a go because she's a vegetarian. So it would probably be, have to be a nut roast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of thinking if I was going to make a video of me cutting mine with paper. Because that's the go-to for every knife maker I've seen on the <laughs> internet. So, uh But yeah, the tomato was good. I mean, it's (laughs) if you don't have a sharp knife, cutting a tomato is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Well, apparently not. (laughs) Just use a wooden butter knife. It's fine. It's not that hard. (laughs) Well, it's sharp is sharp. Yeah. (laughs) Mine also does cut paper, by the way. I just thought that was a bit expected. Yeah. <laughs> so none of you are are shaving your arms or legs or whatever, as we often see knife makers <laughs> prove there. <laughs> you shave your head for. Or... <laughs> well, that would be something. I wasn't going to shave with mine, but I might do now. <laughs> do yeah, I mean, your wife might Just... have a hard time catching up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, she's not quite as hairy as me. That's what she has you for, isn't it? <laughs> Come here, Glenn. I need a leg. <laughs> just ending up buttering your leg instead. No, no, you're just getting kinky, KJ. You and butter again. Yeah. I'm just setting you up for a nice evening. <laughs> that being you're said, like- being finished with the project and also filmed everything except the outro well i've done that but i want to redo it because i was sick as shit so when i'm watching the footage back again it looks like i'm a (laughs) walking corpse um but it's it's really hard not posting a video you have just laying around ready to go i mean i've done everything the voiceover everything is like just upload and then you have to wait for two weeks that's hard (laughs) yeah that must be a killer I've I've sat on videos for a max of four or five days before and 
just can't wait to press that button. Get it out there. <laughs> yeah. I've um I've still got to edit my knife video though, so my project's not completely finished. And I'm not quite sure which direction to take the video in, whether I'm gonna bother talking or just do a a build montage. I've started oh. editing, but just m- to make sure that I got all the footage and see see what yeah. what B roll I need to take. But, yeah, I'm expecting big things from yours at the end, KJ. You like to smash and cut and. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's gonna be smash. Mount it on yeah. the car. Come on, <laughs> do it. You know you wanna. <laughs> It's like a hood ornament, like a written instead of the <laughs> instead of the flying lady on the Rolls Royce. I think that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's illegal, actually. Just drive back in, get back in your driveway with the black bird impaled on the front of your car. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, a thing we didn't uh, get the chance to talk about last week when we had an uh, excellent guest on. Tim was really, uh, really excellent. Uh, it was. It was a good, good week. Yeah, uh, was the fact that both of you had put out videos that we haven't talked about. Now yep. <laughs> you're just looking confused. <laughs> As I remember it, at least we haven't talked in either of your finger joint video or the paint job video. I actually so... did another video as well, KJ, after the finger joint one. Yeah, but we have to go chronolog- <laughs> chronologically. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the the finger joint video was just a, a an add on project for something that went wrong while I was doing the other project, the later video. So that was an accidental video. So it's a kind of a teaser. Yeah, if you like, <laughs> but it didn't end up in the in the main video which it was intended for because it didn't work for that. So <laughs> yeah. Well, then you get got some something out of it at least. Yeah, exactly. That, a that long different. short, or what did you call it? <laughs> it was a long short, <laughs> or a short long, whichever way, whichever way around you want to look at it. A so, long. No, I... no, that's that's something different. <laughs> Sorry. Getting that getting that finger joint um, jig right cost me about two weeks, <laughs> so I had to get at least something out of it. <laughs> But yeah, so I think you can see in that video as well. I'm still struggling a little bit getting that camera to do some decent shots. Yeah. But was it uh, uh, dialing the jig in or making it work, so to say? It, so f- the first problem was that it attaches to my table saw sled. The first table saw sled that I was using, I dropped a few times, so that was out of square. So that was messing everything up. Yeah. So then I stopped. Built a new table to- table saw sled. That's getting a bit tricky to say. <laughs> and um, got a nice square sled built, and then got the jig right. And then it was there's a little um, nog in a wood you put in, which is the same thickness as the blade. Yeah. And it was just getting that at exactly the right distance to make it work perfectly. Which was a swine. You have it too far away from the blade, and the jig and the joints are too tight and too close, and the joints are too loose. Yeah. So just getting that bob on was a bit of a bit of a sausage to get right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Havard's video was the uh, paint it black video, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, well, it's uh, watching paint dry has always been a, <laughs> a hit with the audience. But then again, <laughs> these really slow pace videos seem to strike a chord with the the hardcore fans they're really into it so uh, uh and people also commented on the bob ross uh spontaneous parody there um just painting everything all black so that actually got me idea could i do a half hour video like i've, I've done a bob ross uh live paint along before and it takes about half an hour and then you have a picture but could I put him on my headphones so I can hear what he's saying and I just repeat that but instead of using his colors I just do everything in black so by the end of the video you're just ending up with a black painted canvas but of course you're talking about all the happy trees and the squirrels <laughs> and the rivers and and whatnot. I, I've seen a lot of people do their takes on Bob Ross videos but maybe I should do an all black one 
Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You definitely need the big afro as well, though. Yeah. You've got to invest amazing. in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, knee-deep in it already, so. Yeah. Well, you've got the beard already, so. Yeah. The rest of it. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's now painted and dry, so it's now sitting there uh, waiting for electronics to be put in, so that's nice. Um, and of course, I filmed another video, which I also probably won't have out before tomorrow. And that's, uh, I took the organ apart. And then uh, I fell in love with it to a degree <laughs> where I'm now going to put it back together again and keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so in butchering it, you actually found its heart and soul and couldn't let go of it. Well, I started gingerly, and then it, it was hard starting. <laughs> Probably um, one way for you to go is with everything. <laughs> everything I do is gingerly, yeah. Uh, and then I started taking it apart, and then I realized how magnificent craftsmanship that someone has put into putting it together. And everything came apart really good. I found some dovetail solutions in there, but there was used no glue whatsoever so you just started removing screws and everything came off in an orderly fashion and then suddenly i saw the bellows and i got to learn whatever i needed to learn and then i realized this was really nice put together and all the original parts and the manufacturer stamp inside and everything was giving the date it was assembled and so on and i realized i i can't make myself to cannibalize it so i have to put it back together again and i realized i only need to change a couple of gaskets and then it is like brand spankingly restored so i could do that but of course the reality is i can't give it away because there's no one there who wants it and i don't have room for it <laughs> so i haven't asked the wife yet if i could bring it into the downstairs living room, maybe use it as a table, cover it up with some knitted uh, tablecloth or something like that. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, as of today, I'm keeping it. Yeah, I think things will change when those containers arrive outside. It's yeah. Like, yeah, it's not going in there. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, I found use for it as late as today when I made the short for putting my uh, Fix It Finger sticker up on my bandsaw. <laughs> I made some. Very appropriate uh, music to go with that video. So, yeah. <laughs> very, very impressed with that. How long did it take you to uh, learn that tune? Was it Walsy Matilda? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have known it previously. So, uh, but there was a couple of mishaps. I think I filmed uh, four, five, six takes or something and then <laughs> picked the best one. As you do. <laughs> when you said it was, uh, there was parts signed inside, that's reminiscent of. Um, one of my customers has um, an old Georgian hall with a built-in sort of lead guttering at the top. And um, it was recently, it was well, about two years ago, it was uh, redone, the lead guttering. And uh, they, they went up there and they found it signed from the 1940s. So George Forrester and the date, and that was it. And then they found a repair from the 80s. <laughs> and it went... <laughs> It just said wanker in the days. <laughs> uh, I thought it was hilarious. It was typical of the 80s as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's... Uh, I think it was late 80s. Uh, my mom and dad, they re... Well, they, they made a second entrance to the house that went like uh, straight down to the basement. And of course... Along the staircase, there was this ridge where they had to do some, uh, well, repair concrete work or something like that. And, of course, me and my childhood friend, who is not with us anymore, we put each our hand down in that concrete and signed with our names. And, of course, in the years after, that has been covered up by boards and whatever you call it. So it's uh, it's hidden. And, of course, now we've sold the house, but... It would have been nice to at some day see that again, but of course the house will probably be sold many times over. But 
I, 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 I'm thinking like I'm playing with the thought, but it's hard to like knock on the door and do you mind me chipping a part of your wall off just for uh, <laughs> some good old times? <laughs> Maybe you should knock on the door and say, if you ever you think about renovating, can you just call me? I don't want to help. I just want to look at something. <laughs> Maybe do yeah. that approach. <laughs> well, I, actually, I, I know the people who, uh, or she who bought the house. So I think that uh, if I ask lightly, I would probably be able to lift up some of the, like the, the trim work and uh, to try to find it. But then, of course... I would have to redo it again. And of course, that's going to be a lot of work at the place where you don't have your tools or anything and someone's hanging over your shoulder or looking at you. So no, it's it's going to be a stressful ordeal. Then you can't pretend to be a ghost hunter and find me, oh, well, we have some dead children here <laughs> leaving their marks in the concrete. I have to exercise this part. Uh, well, no, they, they know me too well, so they would like, man, yeah, that's on point. That's him. So, yeah, they, <laughs> they, they wouldn't believe me. So, as you said, Glenn, you made a, a, another video as well, the sign. I made a sign, yeah, a nice little on-air sign for the, uh, for the office here, for when I'm recording. Can you see it tonight? <laughs> nope. No, it's it's funny when we had um, Turgworks on last week. The screen split into four, and you could see it beautifully, couldn't you, in the background? Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. There she is, all lit up. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to have it uh, outside, so <laughs> shall we know that she shouldn't knock on the door because you were live on air. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for my neighbours to see it. To be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you go on. Don't you have an entrance from the house and into your workshop, or do you have to go outside to get in? I have to go outside to get into the workshop and into this space, which is my office space, because this is my old garage. But no, there's no no entrance no entrances from the house okay. yeah, directly okay. in. Then it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Still, you should put it outside. I mean. <laughs> Don't want a neighbor coming around wanting to borrow a weed whacker or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to borrow a strimmer at this time of night. It's, eight, it's half past eight, isn't it? Oh, quarter nine. <laughs> <laughs> that's a strange neighbor that's doing this, that, doing that at this time of year. <laughs> well, I, I might have follow up questions, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, um, it was a nice project to do, the making the sign, made out of teak. My favourite wood, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I think it came together quite nicely in the end, despite the hiccups with the finger joints. I don't think it's worth saying I went for mitres in the end on the actual project. <laughs> yeah, sometimes an easier solution is better. Yeah, well, I'm relatively been... pleased with the video. It's a bit cheesy, but um, it doesn't really matter because nobody's watched it. So. <laughs> <laughs> It gave a nice nod to the podcast as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. I put the lungs back in again and uh, ah, I nice. the mic. Yeah. The it's thing pretty... I thought about, uh, Howard, was your plan for a container workshop. What's your plan for heating it? Or will it be unheated <laughs> or what's. I'm so glad you asked. Uh, of course, it's going to be heated. Um, yeah, because it's we, we live in the civilized part of the world yeah with interesting uh, weather but that being said of course i want it to be heated with um uh, some convection oven that doesn't make any noise for recording purposes but i've also seen this very small like uh combined uh diesel slash wood firing stoves that they have on sailboats okay and uh do I want one of those inside my workshop? Because it's going to be basically my wood shop. And then, of course, instead of carrying all my offcuts outside to burn them, I can burn them inside and have a cozy little fire going, having my cup of tea, doing some sanding. Some nice carbon some monoxide. More tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ventilation is a bigger issue then, I think. <laughs> well, that's an that's a issue... Anyway, I mean, they come with uh, that, of course. The worst thing about having a container workshop, I need the ones with the separate door. 
because if you have to open like the main gates to get in there, I, I I can't stay in there because my mind is going to the place where somebody's just jung locking me in there. Yeah. And of course, I have all the tools in the world to cut my way out of it and enough batteries to do so as well. But there is something about someone unintentionally or even intentionally mm-hmm. just locking it up and you're stuck in there. So, um, yeah, <laughs> emergency exits could have been nice to think about in yeah. case something happens. Being able to open a door without any hands is a, is a good thing, I think. <laughs> yes. Worst comes to show. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to operate an angle grinder without hands, I could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, cutting yourself out. I mean, you could do it, but it, it takes a, a good chunk of... Uh, half an hour to uh, cut yourself out, I would imagine. And uh, if you're in a hurry, that's an awful long time. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's not, eating up more air as well, so, yeah. Not yeah. long after I built my workshop, I had a power cut in there, and of course I've got an electric door on the front of mine. <laughs> and I'd never explored what you have to do if there's a power cut on how you get in there, out, the, out of there. And uh, I've un- got a back door, but that was padlocked from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad emergency exit. Yeah. Luckily, I had my phone on me, so I'd got some, uh, I'd got some lighting. But uh, after a few minutes of panic, realised that if you just pull, there's a bit of string on there. If you pull that, then the the door is manual. Thankfully. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. I've also got- had, I've also had some um, an issue where I've come out of the uh, workshop and I normally press the button to shut the door as I'm exiting. So the door's shutting behind me and then I've come outside and realised that Michelle's gone out and locked the front door. So I'm just <laughs> trapped outside. <laughs> and that's the night Glenn slept in his workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get back in the workshop of art. I was just gone oh, yeah. the house. Oh yeah, because <laughs> the remote was inside the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I was immediately think, thinking, hmm, well, if you string together like 12, 13, 18 volt batteries, then you could power through 30 motor and it's not <laughs> that way. But yeah, using a string and, and hand crank it, that's that's simpler. Yeah. Yeah. And finding batteries that you've not got. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you need a lot of spare batteries for your power tools. <laughs> I mean, of course, I have got a generator in there as well, which I could have fired up, but that would have probably killed me with the fumes <laughs> <laughs> by the time I'd got it wired. <laughs> oh, that's a good uh, escape room, I think. I would, have, I would have put some genuine jeopardy in the video, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got, I've got two minutes before I die. <laughs> Am I going to do it in time? <laughs> no. <laughs> Falling out of the workshop is a... With a plume of smoke around you. That's, yeah. (laughs) I'm all for it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, but it's a good question. Heating. Um, Then again, those wood fire ovens are quite expensive. So I think there's a lot of tools that's higher on that list. You can always make one yourself. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, We'd probably rather use the money on getting a welder in and making one of my own. They made a cast iron, aren't they, though? Um, no, iron I think actually uh, the ones I've been looking at, yeah, some of them are made of cast iron, but those are basically mm-hmm. just for wood fire, but the, the ones who also burn diesel are stainless steel, basically. The, the sawdust heating, I think, would probably would be a really good solution. Yeah. Sawdust burners. I'm always reluctant to burn the actual wood unless it's on the fire in the house. Yeah, what you it's... want is to make a little little pellet factory that you pour sawdust in one and then it <laughs> puts out little rabbit turds of, yeah. of pellets. And then, of course, you you mix the sawdust with some used uh, car oil or something, and then you make pellets out of that. I mean, that is fuel for... Uh, <laughs> could fuel an entire container ship with that one. <laughs> we could go the way of just solely going on a Brussels sprout diet and producing your own methane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way. Or, 
Or you can get a, a, gl- a, a Glen Helium balloon because they are <laughs> flammable as hell. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 hard. I want to. I've I've been out and trying to survey the area, and then I know where I want to put it. Um, I also realize that we now have enough room, besides our house, to put up a garage, and it's 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 hard to convince the wife of putting up a brand new garage and then <laughs> converting it to a workshop without ever having a car in it. And then Glenn left the building. His hand always looks like it's gonna pick a nose. Yeah. We should let's... make a big wooden nose and put over it. But let's not ask where that finger has been. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's better not to know, I think. Yeah. Something <laughs> is best buried. Yeah. I nearly made a number one crude mistake then. I thought my daughter was home from dance and it's my next door neighbour pulling up on the driveway and if I'd have got talking to her, we would never have finished the podcast at all with me in it tonight. <laughs> oh, it's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I feel so like we, we need to apologise to the other podcasts out there. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> all of well, them? <laughs> At, at least three of Who others. Who am I offended now? <laughs> no, I don't. We've not offended anybody, but we just we did things so right that we got a a message through today, didn't we? So I think I should probably play that and then you know just apologise to all the other podcasts out there. Well, boys, uh, I think your congratulations is in order. Yours is the first podcast I've listened to twice. The same episode, obviously. I've- listen to your podcast more than twice but the same episode more than twice well done oh that's high praise see sorry to all the other podcasts out there that tim's been on obviously (laughs) didn't rate you as highly (laughs) or did he have to listen twice because of the mumbling of those he didn't understand (laughs) half of it (laughs) That might be it. That yeah. might be it. I don't think people congratulate you on your mumbling, do they? <laughs> well, did it say congratulate in there? I couldn't really. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Obviously, mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was a nice episode. It was a, it was a good guest, wasn't he? Yeah, great yeah. guest. Definitely in the top three. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <sighs> I, I, I'm a. I'm almost at the end of my list, but I mean the rest is. I need to save something for the for the half pint as well. <laughs> Unless you fall asleep before that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we should just cut it short and go to bed. Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> I could do the uh, recommendations now if you like. Hit it. Yeah. So uh, this week. I came across a couple of um, YouTubers I've not come across before. Small channels, and I think they've got. I think they've got some uh, big potential. So I just thought I'd give them a shout out. So the first one's the Rare Craftsman. He's got a few videos out, and um, he's making some nice, interesting stuff. He seems like a nice guy as well. I've had a little bit of conversation with him, and then the other one is Anna Stealthforth Makes. She does some interesting things with a lathe. She likes to spray bits of wood while they're on the lathe and let it spray everywhere and get some really nice effects going. But she's making some nice little videos as well. That's basically what Tugworks is doing, isn't it? Oh, did you? (laughs) you... (laughs) Just spinning wood and uh, stuff flies (laughs) everywhere, yeah. (laughs) Did you see the bowl with the hole that he made? (laughs) The bowl with the hole, which wasn't the goal, apparently. (laughs) Well, a bowl should only have as many holes as you intend. Mich- Michelle pointed out that it, it does look like a hand basin now. And I think a few other people did on his comments as well. Mm. Nice. What's, what's that? A hand basin? A, hand, a little a little sink for washing okay, your hands yeah. in. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that's quite a skill to be able to turn a hand basin, don't you? Yeah, that's yeah that a... could go for big money for a fancy hotel or something yeah. like that. Only last week. Havard uh, was asking what you can make on a lathe. Yeah. You know. Turns out. There you go, uh... that's one extra thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're up to three, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we still need more things on that list before I put a lathe on my list. Yeah. yeah. Mich- Michelle's out tonight, actually, on the um, with the old fellas at the lathe club. 
for mm. the first time. Mm. So, are you so how... expecting to to getting her uh, going lady shopping this weekend? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, you know, I live in a little village in Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire is quite a big county, but not very, not very overly populated. So, how many members do you think the local lathe club has got? Or how many how many people do you think are turning up there tonight in the local village hall? Forty six. <laughs> That's a good guess. Do you have a guess, KJ? I have no clue. Probably so, a lot. So seventy five people were expected to turn up tonight. Fucking and hell. T- I thought about seventy two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and but, and how, how 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 many people in the village? In the, I don't know about the village, but in the Lave Club there are hundred and fifty members, so half of them are turning up to the meeting tonight. I was just amazed. I don't know anybody that has a lave. <laughs> Where are they hiding all of them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no wonder you can't pick up a lathe cheap round here. Everybody's bloody doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed all the railings are all made out of wood round here for the local councils. <laughs> and everything is cylindrical. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's got a fruit bowl, but <laughs> Oh that's the that's the one thing I could see myself getting. I, I think his Instagram handle is a weird guy. Um, he actually got a CNC lathe. So things doesn't need to be cylindrical so he can make a, a gun stock or a whatever. Um, he usually makes bone lamps for whatever reasons and dolphins and so on. But uh, that's a piece of kit I could see myself getting. Fancy. But then again, I actually get that attachment for mine as well, so I could just spend a few more dollars on it, and then I could do that. Hmm. <laughs> oh, no, stay away from that rabbit hole. You have enough as it is. <laughs> You're not the first one who said that this week. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, uh, are you destined for a life to uh, with that organ in your workshop, then? It's never going to go anywhere, is it? Well, it are needs... Just, are you just learning to live with it all? It needs to go. Um, and of course, the best scenario would be it going to someone else. But uh, yeah, I have been thinking about if I could move it inside. Um, and with the excuse of it being fun for the kids to uh, play around with it for a few years. To, and then I toss it out. But uh, Can't you have it as a side table or putting the TV on or something like that? I could, but... We always try to keep stuff from entering the house, or rather to get rid of stuff. And getting an old pedal organ, that's the wrong item the wrong way. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, when you go around to visit friends for a dinner party or, you know, just a few drinks and whatnot, and you go around there and you take a bottle yeah, of wine. Yeah, and they bring a gift, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure this is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> you just say, you know, I, I really, really do appreciate you inviting us round, and you know, I just didn't think wine and flowers would cut I it. Want, I want you to have this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like and heartfelt, like a hand yeah. on the shoulder. Yeah, oh. so it was a family heirloom. You must look after it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can make a little plaque with their name on it on a CNC as well, and put it on. So. You could make it a game between you and your friends, and the game is just leaving it somewhere on their property <laughs> without them noticing it straight away, without you making a clean getaway. That maybe is in line with what we talked about last week. I mean, just leaving it somewhere and then uh, looking up the local newspaper the next day to see if uh, anything has been written about it. So I can leave it in the <laughs> town square or whatever. Yeah, you need to find some place good that the weather will destroy it. But and, and that, that being, would be nice. That being said, this will of course defeat the fact that we want to get rid of it. But I, I at some point, I want to participate in this uh, Red Bull soapbox race, and I do arrange one in Oslo. And it already has wheels, so it, it just needs. Uh, <laughs> A seat attachment, and then playing the organ whilst going down the hill at as I fast just, as yeah. It's when you send the org, uh, the uh, organizers um, 
a description because, of course, you know, they're not expecting you to have built it at this point. And you say, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to ride down the hill on an organ. And then you turn <laughs> up on this. And, like, that wasn't what we were expecting. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a good thing that it's not electrical, that it's... I mean, it would be really... I can see it, I mean, atop a of uh, a mountain peak or something, looking over a fjord, and just sitting there playing... With the the sound going out uh, through the mountains, I oh, think that would look look really nice. Yeah. So, if any one of our listeners uh, owns a helicopter, uh, <laughs> give me a call. I have some <laughs> ideas. You just need a couple of strong friends <laughs> and a weekend. <sighs> hey guys, you want to do something fun this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Free beer. <laughs> oh. oh crap! Yeah, that's uh. <laughs> Be like fuck off! I've already heard this one before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that being said, I know how to. I think it took me only a rough half an hour to take the part. Um, or and then if I if I gave myself another fifteen minutes, I could take it apart so that four guys could probably, well. Uh, easily might not be the word, but it it would be movable, also mm. in the vertical direction if you needed it on top of something. So, uh, yeah. Do you um, have any nice caves around where you live? Because that would be really nice if you could carry it in pieces, so so people would wonder how on earth did they get it here? Because <laughs> the pathway to this place is like narrow, nothing. And then sitting inside a cave, that would re- make the sound really nice. Yeah, that's... I don't know when it's anyone around here, but of course at my home place there's a cave and you also have to get there by boat. So you yeah. first had to put it onto a boat and there are restrictions on that lake so you can't... There aren't any big boats so you have to get it in a small skiff and then row it over and then assemble it inside a cave. So that would... That'd that's a video. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a video. And then, of course, it's an eight hour drive to get there. So, yeah. Do you, um, it, would it be quicker to take a pass if you changed all the uh, screws out for Phillips as opposed to the flat heads? It's probably got on it now. Yeah. I mean, if I, uh, <laughs> when I started putting it back together again, I did actually contemplate just swapping all the screws for hex screws because that would uh, <laughs> greatly improve on it. I really hate flatted screws. Um, yep. I think it's uh I think it's the one of the first videos where I actually swear within the the first two minutes of the video. <laughs> and that's all related to the flathead screws. <laughs> yeah, so um, I've had a few jobs in the past, not many, but um just a few jobs where I've needed an, an old flathead screw and I you find that you know, you, you hate them so much that whenever you get them you throw them away. Yeah. And so when you need one, they're bloody hard to get hold of. Oh. For instance, I've got an old an old sign hanging up in my dining room which needed flathead screws. You know, Phillips just would have looked wrong. Well, they they do look good in some settings, and but the problem is you you never have the screwdriver. And I've seen, I think it was like the Maker Santa a couple of years ago. I think this old Tony. Made a flathead yeah. screwdriver for Look Mom No Computer. Yeah. And it doesn't have that angled edge, but it actually is flat. And then the sides are flat, so it will actually slot in really good. But that also makes you having to have the exact size for the screws. And of course, yeah. nobody you has that. that. So now they make all the screwdrivers with a, a tapered angle, which makes them rubbish for any flathead screw. And then, of course, it just makes people more angry and hate them more. So it's like a bad circle. I'm really annoyed when you don't, if you have multiple flathead screws and you don't, they're not lined up. Because I want them. If they're a little yeah. bit wonky in different direction, yeah, yeah. that really throws me off. So, yeah. Actually, all our door handles in the house have um, flathead screws. And I always make sure they're lined up. Do you do them on the vertical or the horizontal? <laughs> we have yeah, that as well closest. but it's it's three screws in a circle around the handle so 
you could put all in horizontal or you can put them in vertical, but then you can also put them in tangent to the right. circle around <laughs> yeah. or, or, or like or... what you described, that they all uh, is uh, well, collinear with the center point, yeah. Yeah. God, I'm glad ours aren't circular. That would be so confusing. <laughs> Too many options. <laughs> but that being said, on all our doors, they keep unwinding themselves. Uh, so, and of course, I don't have a flathead screwdriver anywhere close. So I, I just use the butter knife. So whenever they are almost falling <laughs> out, I just screw them back in as far as I could get with my fingertips. And then I just go and find a butter knife and do the rest. <laughs> Is this a, seems like another challenge is coming up for the knives. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a flathead. It's just oh, it's a knife with a flathead screwdriver and a tip. Yeah, that's cool. I think mine's got a pointy end. I think it might manage a Phillips as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> are, are we grind it putting down. together the number one crude mistakes knife test list? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things a knife should be able to do. Butter a sandwich, All right. cut a tomato, shave a leg, in a flathead. Yeah. Uh, you're doing a see in the dark one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should choose uh, competitions where you're sure to win. <laughs> I was very tempted to put a bottle opener feature on the end of mine, on the handle end. I thought that would have been a good, uh, neat little trick. Is it a bottle opener with a knife or a knife with a bottle opener? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> it, was a, it was a knife along, so it was a knife with a bottle opener. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that being said, I, I, was, I, I remember when I was a kid, I got this two. I, I don't even know what this character is called in English, but he has like a, a bottle opener rings, and I got two of them because, of course, you need <laughs> two. Um, and then I got a keychain at some point with a bottle opener and I still find myself in seeing like uh, someone bought like a bottle opener for me which you can screw on the wall because I could put that in our outside uh, uh, summer cabin and then when did I last use a bottle opener fucking can't remember I mean that's I I haven't opened a a bottle uh, with a bottle opener in years uh, I mean, I would struggle to. I had to go to the store and actually seek one out uh, to use one of my bottle openers. So it's a. Uh... But still, I, I I end up buying them or getting them or wanting them, but uh, I don't need them. I do. All right, First... I'll I'll send you a care package. <laughs> yeah. I got a couple of thousand lying around. Yeah, that last weekend was the first weekend in February, so that marked the end of dry January, so I need some bottle <laughs> openers. <laughs> I think after... A, but I feel that's everywhere, basically, but uh, after the aluminium can, I mean, glass bottles are kind of getting a rarity. That depends on how fancy beer you drink. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Most of the beer I drink is in a bottle. Yeah, makes sense. I prefer <laughs> I prefer the cans. I think most of them are. In you cans don't drink color. beer, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> the Coke does not count. Sometimes I do. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I, I I mostly drink one beer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the thing. I only ever drink one at a time. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I had a beer. No. Maybe last summer? <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I had a beer out in the sun, but yeah. Huh. What's your tipple of choice? Well, it's usually some sort of uh, IPA, but uh, I think it was basically under the the pandemic. I just... I had my one brand. I really liked it. And then at some point I just, ugh, I really don't want another one today. And then after that, I really never fancied beer. Yeah. Fair enough. Are, are you a drinks man from now on? Well, uh um, Cocktail. I have I never said no to a cocktail before. So, uh, but I don't make them myself. I do the, the most fancy thing I do these days is a, a gin and tonic. Um, 
And I'm not sure if that is classified as a cocktail. It's hardly a drink. Brilliant. It's a really nice drink there. Yeah, it's yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. Doesn't, it's either doesn't... that or a half glass of uh whiskey, but that's getting kinda of rare as well. Ooh, I'm not maybe sure I should rebuild the organ to be a drinks cabinet. <laughs> mm, that would look cool. Then you have to and uh, put the the kid lock on it that you have to play a specific tune to get the bottles to rise from it. <laughs> now we're talking. It's, uh... <laughs> Overcomplicating things. <laughs> yeah, that's your language. I I built a drinks cabinet from a guitar last year, so maybe you should. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the only guitar... <laughs> KJ's got to try and find something bigger and better for his. <laughs> Grand piano drinks cabinet. <laughs> Church organ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should be something with a tap on. The only, um, the only guitar I have that is large enough, it's, it's too decent to do anything with, but yeah. An acoustic guitar with a wine tap on it. Oh, that would be that idea. It's a bag in box, but it's in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a easy. That's a easy fit. You need a hole on the front to put the tap in, and then of course I make a lid on the backside to put the bag in. That's it. Yeah. It's like you've headed into the realms of secret drinking, though, isn't it? That's a bit problematic, then, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you, if you're gonna play guitar, I mean. You're not going to be sober, are you? I mean... <laughs> oh, you still wanted to play as well? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> not going to ruin gonna... a perfectly nice guitar, making it unplayable. That uh, <laughs> defeats the purpose. I was thinking, going back to the organ, if you put in some kind of... something that measures the, the, the airflow, and then having that convert into actually a pump, so you have to play the organ to get beer out of the tap, but it's not the, as you you're not pushing <laughs> beer through the system, but it's used as a measure how much you're pedaling, that much beer you can get. Even better, I saw this guy. He made a drink mixer. It's a lot of pumps, different bottles of alcohol, and then he had an Arduino, and then there was a program, and I I don't remember what gave the input to the computer, but based on what he did, it mixed different drinks. And I think it was, mm. yeah, the one option was, I think, or maybe this was a completely different video. Uh, you can order your drinks like uh, uh, a margarita or a Long Island iced tea and you would get it. Um, but then there was also this guy who hooked it up to some contraption where it just randomly mixed alcohol so you never got the same drink twice uh, so you could get a really rubbish one or you can get one that actually was good but you never know what the the, the mix was so it was uh, one for the eternity but what if you combine those if you had like a lot of bottles there's a lot of room in that organ so you can have a lot of bottles um, and you need some pumps and you need a dispenser and a computer and then it brew it makes the drink based on the melody you're playing. So if you played a tequila song, of course you get a tequila shot. <laughs> and then if you if you play a Christmas tune, you get an eggnog and so on. And then of course uh, you have the drink menu, and uh, it doesn't say the drinks; it just say the melodies, and you have to play them. And then uh, it's like uh, you unlock the new feature. What do you get? What would you get if you played like an angry tune on it? You know, something. That- I don't know, something a bit like one of KJ's video Jack Daniels. music things. Jack Daniels, yeah. <laughs> Crap whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Angry fuel. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a better idea than the one I thought, that you would hook one bottle to each each key. So when you press the key, that's one milliliter of that alcohol. So then one song becomes one drink. <laughs> if you play it wrong, you get another drink. But... <laughs> Yeah, I thought I thought you meant that you you press one key and it gave you one milliliter of that, and then in the same when you press another key in the same glass, it added another milliliter of another drink. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that's a dangerous cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that depends on how long you play. <laughs> and then Glenn falling asleep on the keys, <laughs> and the glass just filling up. 
the biggest about issue half an hour at that rate. Yeah. <laughs> and the biggest issue with that is building something like that in Norway because buying all that alcohol, it's it's going to be like a, a half a million pounds just in alcohol. <laughs> something like that, yeah. yeah. And that's only the three basic bottles. So what we're talking for a bottle of standard whiskey there. Do you do you have bells and teachers just you know just the standard regular blended blended whiskey? I mean I don't I, I don't think whiskey is the the most bog standard I can think of is like a, a bottle of Jameson. Yep. Like that is what people use in uh Irish oh. coffees around here, but I think a seven a 0.7 liter of a bottle will set you back between yeah around 50 pounds. Bloody hell. Yeah. Good and that's card. not even the fancy stuff. And it's the same with vodka, I guess. You you have like... Uh, I don't think you can get a bottle of the, the cheapest, blandest vodka for under 40 euros. Wow. Yeah, and eighty percent, eighty percent of it in packs or yeah. something like that. So yeah, right. Twenty four pounds for a for a bottle of Jameson in Sweden. That's not too bad. Yeah, no. yeah. So it's basically half, and that, that's yeah. why Norwegians go to Sweden. Right. And Swedes go to Denmark or uh, uh, Estonia or Latvia or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And of course, the Danes go to Germany. The Germany, the Germans yes. go to Poland, and the Poland goes to Romania. We... And everyone in Romania is basically fucked because they can't go anywhere. Yeah. So we... yeah, the English go to France. <laughs> <laughs> the cheap booze. Yeah. <laughs> Although whiskey's no cheaper in France, but wine and beer definitely is. Yeah, I think it's you can probably find cheap whiskey, but ooh. That's uh, you don't want to go there. No, why? You dice in with your eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so on that positive note, we end this week's episode. Have a good night and have a glass on us. Night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>